In this tutorial in CyberLink PowerDirector, we'd like to show you how you can use the speech bubbles of the callout pack that are found in the PIP design room in order to make it look as though animals are talking. This may not be something you do often, but it does show you the capability and the customizability of the speech bubbles in the callout pack. So we'd like to show you a short example of what we did and then we'll show you some ways in which you can use those tools in PowerDirector. First thing I want to say as a footnote is that when I had this footage of animals, I found that oftentimes the mouth movement, in this case the beak movement, was much too quick for me to insert words on the screen and making it look like there was any kind of even pretend conversation going on. So the way I solved that problem was I highlighted my raw video clip, I clicked on the tools button above the timeline, and I went to video speed. And then what I found useful, and you may find this useful too if you ever are filming animals that you want to make talk, as it were, is change the speed. Now my default was 26 seconds and 9 frames. I lengthened it to 1 minute 7 seconds and 5 frames. And so that was a way for me to slow down that motion where I could insert more words on the screen and make it look somewhat like an actual conversation. So that's just a tip I'm going to leave with you. Next thing I'd like to do is actually get to how we did the speech bubbles and how you can modify them. So we're going to go near the end. By the way, I should mention that I did use two different tracks. I changed the style of the bubble for the animal as well as the little arrow pointing to who was talking. I found that helpful. But we're going to go up here to the end where we have no conversation going on. Okay, and now let's enter some. I'm going to go not to the title room, which is what you might expect, but to my PIP room. It's the F5 function key, my PIP objects. Click there. And now I'm going to go to my subcategory, which is my callout pack. right here and then let's enlarge and then I'm going to also change the size of the thumbnails that we have. Let's use extra large icons and you see some of the styles that we can pick from when using these objects. Now you can use any of these or you can actually click on the icon up here to design your own. We have tutorials on that. Let's just pick one. I'll just take this PIP57 here, drag and drop it on any video track. And now you see we're halfway there already. Let's uh, do some modification of it. Now there are a couple of things you can change right on this screen. You can change the location of the speech bubble. You can change the orientation of the part that comes out who is actually speaking as it were and you can also change the magnification if you want. Now I have found when I try to edit the text here and you actually can that I have a delay that I find annoying so I find it much easier to go into the shape designer to make those kinds of changes. Let's do that now. I'm going to double click on that in the timeline that will open up my shape designer. And here we have this as one of the shapes that we can use. Now if you drag all the way down on the shape type, you're going to find that the last five of them have something that hangs out that you can modify. You can change the direction, the location of it, the size of it in some degree. And you can also change the control. Let's say we don't want to go round. Let's go rounded rectangle. I click on that and then I can take this and move it over and now we have something similar. 
There's another subcategory called presets. We're not going to deal with that. You can change the outline. Now this one doesn't have an outline, but if I want one, I can just click here. And again, I can change the size of the outline, the blur, the opacity, the color. I can make it a uniform color or a two color gradient if I want to. We can change the two colors and you notice it defaults to white and blue. Let's say I want a dark blue instead of a light blue. I'll click there and now I have a gradient. I can change the direction of the gradient. And so you can modify the outline and gradiate the outline. So you also have a shadow and this one happens to be turned on. Let's open it up and see. Right now we have a Looks like we have a white shadow on the object only. Let's change it to orange and see what that does. Okay, there's a little bit of an orange. Let's go to outline only. Now we're just on the outline. So you have many modifications. We have more detailed tutorials on modifying that. And then we have our actual title. This is what I'd like to focus on. We can change the title. It says add title here. I can edit in the box or I can actually edit in the box on the left. I can say, how are you doing? I. All right, so that gives me the, the title. You notice what it's doing. It is trying to center it. I can go left align. Must have a big space in there. There we go. Or I can right align. I can, I can leave it centered if I want to. Now notice what happens. I'm going to take my text here. I'm going to increase the size. Off the recording screen, I'm going to go to 96. And you notice it won't let me go to 96. Why didn't it do that? Because I have shrink text on overflow. The maximum size of the text will be what fits in the box. Now if I enlarge the box, you notice it enlarged here. This gives me my font size. If I make it bigger yet, I can use a bigger font. Now it's up to 37. Now if I want to override that and kind of do it manually, I uncheck the box shrink text on overflow. Now I can pick any size font I want. I'll do control A to select it all. And I can make it as tiny or as big as I want. But even if I make it very large and turn this box back on, it goes back to the largest size that the box will hold. So that's a nice feature. And again, we can change the, the font size. We can change the font color. We can change the background in the box, all kinds of modifications that we can make uh, just, to do, uh, just to fit whatever you like to do. We've, I like in this case I'd probably change the the background the fill on the sh on the shape. Right now I've got these two colors. I'm just going to make it a uniform color. Let's make it something dark. Let's make it a gray. Ah, and then I'm going to have to change my text. Change our text to red. And then when you're done, you click OK. And all you have to do is control the duration. We would shorten this, for example. And then I would do another call out. And I'll double click again very quickly, get back into my shape designer. And then the response would be something like this. And so we now we have a conversation going back and forth between our two feathered friends at the end of the clip. So that's one way in which you can use, modify, customize speech bubbles found in the call-out pack of the PIP Designer in PowerDirector.